Good morning everybody on this um, last Sunday in May. Um, we have today, uh, the, we don't have the, um, um, the joy of uh, a keyboard today, so you'll have to put up with me playing my guitar. Um, I was just saying um, before we started the service that um, I picked up the guitar after a long time in, in, in its case and it was all dull and listless. It, we couldn't get it to come on to tune and couldn't get it to play. Um, I had to change the strings to, to give it a bit of life and, and I think it's, a, it's about that with worship I think. So when you come into worship after you haven't worshipped for a while, it takes a bit of time to get into it. So it, you, you have to um, put your life and soul into it a little bit more. Uh, and hopefully well, the guitar won't go out of tune uh, with its new strings and um, we'll be okay to play with it. So, um, you should have received it in weekly news. Um, if, for those of you who haven't, uh, there may be one or two copies here, I'm not sure, um, but there, there are available to you. Um, the services that are as normal as, um, today, we've got the extra issue of a church members meeting on Tuesday. So, as many of those who are church members um, in the church, it is okay for us to meet together. So we will try to have that um, serve at, uh, meeting at 7.30 on Tuesday. And for those people that can't make it, it will be available on Zoom as well. So I'd encourage as many people as possible who are members to come along to that meeting. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I need to say about the notices. Except to say that today, I, I don't know how many people know this, but um, it is Jackie's birthday. Um, and Jackie is with us on Zoom, I should hope. Um, and so we can all wish um, Jackie a happy birthday. So to start the service, I thought we'd sing Come On and Celebrate. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's for, for Jackie's birthday. Um, oh, unfortunately, you still can't join in in singing, but sort of, um, you can be there in thought and you can clap um, and join in as much as you can that way. Celebrate and sing to the King. 
But I just want to start the service today by sort of um, um, talking a little bit about worship, because then um, this is what we're here for as part of the service. The word worship, I think, actually means to revere and adore God, both individually or as a group. Um, and it often means that we also honour God. <coughs> we use the term praise um, as part of worship as well. Um, and praise is the respect and gratitude we have to God. Um, and that's uh, as part of our acts of worship to God. And another word we use is grace. Um, and grace doesn't really have anything to do with worship as such. But it's, it's something where we receive free, and it's the unmerited favour of God. So we're going to sing, that leads us on to the first um, song we're going to sing called Wonderful Grace. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
much of the worship that's um, in the Bible um, is contained really in the Psalms. Um, and I'd like to read you Psalm 150, which sort of sums up the praise that we um, can give to God. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with timbre and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and the pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We'll sing uh, one more song which will lead us into a time of prayer. And so we sing with a song which is, um, helps to bring us into that time of prayer. And it's Jesus, what a beautiful name. Name above all names. seemingly rigged where dictators have been re-elected with 95% of the vote when there are so many people who objected to their rule. We pray 
your own country and all who leads our country in its endeavours. So let's uh, have a, note, a time of open prayer. So anyone who wants to pray on anything that they've got on their hearts may do so. praying for our friend Ian Thompson and the work of bringing good news. Lord, we thank you that he's been able to help Christians in Pakistan, South Sudan, Nepal, Central Asia. He's been able to help them with food, parcels, during this difficult time. We thank you for the farmers he's been able to support in South Sudan, mm -hmm. that they have started to become self-sufficient for food. And it's encouraging, Lord, to see this practical help he can give in these difficult days in which we live. So continue to bless Ian. Give him and his friend John Simmons who helps him so much, much wisdom. We do pray that you'll continue to bless that ministry and encourage them in the work they do. Amen. 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 We continue to pray for Solomon, Nathaniel, Amen. Father. Yes, in India at this time, we believe, and uh, really unable to return, although he's doing tremendous work there. And we thank you that he's the right man for the right time there. Yeah. And we continue to pray that you would help him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's such an inspirational man, mm -hmm. and he'll be working among the families there and encouraging them. We just pray that you would encourage him mm -hmm. and help him to remain true to you in these difficult days. We don't know how to pray for India, Lord. It's so overwhelming. But we do ask that you would have mercy. Yeah. We do pray, Lord, that the nations, um, and you're sovereign, Lord of the nations, that you mm. would work in the hearts and minds of the leaders of the nations yeah. to make the difference that they can so easily make mm. if they had a heart to do so. Pray for our own nation in that way. We thank you that we have... Uh, developed so wonderfully with the vaccine but sometimes Lord we feel a little embarrassed that we are so far ahead and others are dying in their thousands and we pray that there will be more equity about this yeah. more sharing mm -hmm. more generosity more sense of responsibility for the world yeah. so we do pray for this in Jesus name mm -hmm. Amen, Amen. Amen. Just thank you this morning that we can come together and worship you. And thank you for the reminders we have. We you know sometimes um, so many things get in our way. Mm. It would help us just to focus on you. Yeah. And we realize what a privilege it is this morning. Mm. Help us not to take it so easy, but realize just what it costs mm. for us to come in Jesus' name. Mm. And we do pray for people around the world for many different reasons cannot meet together. But as a government, they're secret believers. Yeah. They're fearful, Lord. They're isolated. Lord, we bring those people to you today and pray that in their the isolation even, they may know your presence, yeah. your peace and your joy in the most amazing way. We thank you for those that are coming to know you through dreams and visions and reading your word. We praise your name, Lord. Yeah. We thank you. Mm. And we just ask, Lord, that you will help us day by day to be the people you want us to be. Mm. Yeah. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 to complete, complete our prayers today I want to pray for all the people here 
And for the people who are watching on Zoom or later on, I want to pray for them and their families, for their health and welfare, that they might feel lifted at this time of bank holiday, that they might feel able to share in some normality. They might look forward to the time when things will be go back relatively to normal. Mm. We pray that they will discover worship in their lives and praise in their lives mm. and experience the grace of God. Now Lord, we pray that Colin will be inspired by your Holy Spirit to share God's word with us and the inspiration he's been given. Mm. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, take this off. Nice to see you. Trust God it blesses as we come together this morning uh, to look at the Bible, and uh, I want to share a few thoughts with you. Um, it's always interesting to know, and I don't know if you're interested in geography. It's something I really like. Kate obviously is very keen on geography, and I've always been interested in geography. When I was at school, I did not like history. But since leaving school, I found history a lot more interesting as well. And um, I want to talk about a town today, a town in the Bible called Capernaum. You could have, I could have chosen many towns, but this one particularly interested me. I've given the uh, children a little quiz to do, okay? It's on capital cities, because I'm sure it might be relevant to towns. You can have a little go yourself if you want. There's a list of the towns, a list of the countries, and you can match them up. They've got numbers by them, you can just put them across. Um, there's one very, very hard one, but if you get all the others right, that will be the, the last one on the list. So, so, and you can ask people in the back row if you want a bit of help, okay? Okay, but I want to talk about this town, this particular town called Capernaum. Now, where was it? Where, where was it? Where was it? Let's have a look. As you know, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, okay? which is down here more. They went, they went to Egypt to live as a family. They moved up to um, the Galilean area, okay, to, uh, and read Nazareth on the map up here. And then later on, he moved to Capernaum. Um, obviously, it's about 27 miles, just if you're interested, from Nazareth, okay? And you know Jesus didn't really, he didn't really fit in terribly well in Nazareth. It says here, when Jesus had finished these parables, he moved from there, that is um, uh, Nazareth, coming to his hometown, he began to teach the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miracle powers from, they asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? This is the people of Nazareth, purely looked him at that. Isn't his son, the mother's name Mary? Isn't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon and Judas? We know Jesus had brothers and sisters, and they took offence at him. But Jesus said to them, "A prophet is not honour except in his own town, and in his own town is not without honour except in his own town and his own home." 
And he did many, not many, he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. And we know that it says in Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went to live in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. This was foretold of the prophet. So he moved from Nazareth into this area of a town of Capernaum, up here on the side of the lake of Galilee. And Jesus uh, did m many things there because it, I call it a town of miracles. You see? He went there into the synagogue and one day, it says they went to Capernaum and went, when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to preach. And there was a man there in the synagogue and he was possessed by an evil spirit and he cried out, what do, you, what do you want to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. Jesus said, be quiet. Come out of him. The spirit took, shook the man violently and it came out of him with a shriek. The people were amazed, it says. A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. The news about him spread quickly over the region of Galilee. So this was a wonderful miracle that Jesus did in this town of Capernaum. He caused an evil spirit to come out of this man who acknowledged, interestingly, who Jesus was. And then you know, it was at Capernaum when Simon's mother-in-law became ill. She was in bed with a fever, it says here. And Jesus came, and when he was told about it, he went up to her, so he went to her, took her by the hand, helped her up, and the fever left her. And she began to wait on them. And it says then, this is all in the area of Capernaum, that evening after sunset, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But the demons would not, but the, he would not let the demons speak because they knew he, who he was. He did marvellous miracles there. And then, of course, I'm sure you all remember the story of the centurion servant. It says, when Jesus had finished saying all these things in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. There, a, servant's, a, a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some of the elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. This important official, this soldier, centurion, in charge of a hundred soldiers, heard about Jesus, and he cared so much for his servant that he wanted Jesus to come and heal him. And I'm sure you remember the story that the, 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 the leader said to him, don't, don't bother to trouble yourself. Don't, you don't need to come. I love those words, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am under, under authority with soldiers under me. I tell one, go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Don't know if you children are obedient to your parents like that. <laughs> I hope you are. But this man was used to giving orders. He was used to telling people what to do. And they did it. And he saw this same authority, this same power in Jesus. He said, here was someone, a man who had power. <clears throat> and we know that he said to Jesus, you don't need to come, just say the word. What did Jesus say? When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith, even in Israel. Okay? Then the men who had been sent returned to the house 
and found the servant well. What an amazing character. He heard about Jesus. He never met him, but he believed. And he saw the power and the authority that he had. And then there was the paralyzed man. I'm sure you all know this story very well. I'm sure if you, in Sunday school, you, I don't suppose anybody here has not heard it. How these men brought this man who was paralyzed on a stretcher to Jesus. And they couldn't get in. So they made a hole and lowered him through the roof. Okay? I hope he was all right. I bet he was a bit scared. I don't know. I don't know. Do you trust ropes? When, in the fire service, when I first joined, we used to go up to the tower, quite high up, two or three stories up, and they'd get you to tie a bowline, and they'd say, are you confident that this bowline, this knot will hold you? And, yeah, yeah, okay then, we'll lower you down the, from the three floors up on it. Okay, we, everybody used to double check that the knot was right, and then put it under their arms, a bit of padding, and we'd lower people down. To give them confidence in the, the rope, in the line, in the knot they tied. This man, he was trusting in these guys who lowered him down through the roof to Jesus. And again, Jesus, what did he do? He saw their faith. He saw their faith. And this man was healed. He took his mat and went home. And then also, there was the royal official son. This was another story that happened. Okay. This son... Um, this man was sick. There were, it says here in the Bible, in John chapter 4, I'll put the references up there if you're interested. John chapter 4, when this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee of Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. It says, there was a certain royal official whose son, whose son lay sick at Capernaum. So Jesus wasn't actually at Capernaum, but this official's son was sick in Capernaum. And do you remember he said to Jesus, please come and heal him. And, and, and Jesus said, this is the reply, you may go, your son will live. And what does it say? The man took Jesus at his word and departed. He came to Jesus, he asked for help. He wanted Jesus probably to come and see and touch but Jesus said, you may go, your son will live. And he took Jesus at his word. Tremendous faith. Tremendous faith. It says here, this was the second miraculous sign that Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. And also, it's interesting that when Jesus was walking on the water, he was en route, he was en route to Capernaum. So we see just some of the marvellous miracles that took place in this town. Evil spirits driven out. Simon's mother-in-law healed. The centurion's servant healed. The paralysed man healed. The royal official's son healed. Jesus showed this wonderful miracle declaring who he was walking on the water. Don't suppose any of us could walk on water. Okay. Uh, I'm not very keen on water, and uh, I don't think I'd ever try walking on it. <laughs> Some love it, I know. But also, you see, another thing happened in in, Galilee, in Capernaum. Not only was it a town of miracles, it was a town of calling. Because do you remember Matthew, Matthew, Levi, the tax collector? He was at Capernaum. We read about that in Mark chapter 2. And that's where Jesus called him. He called this tax collector. He told, called him. Okay? It says here, Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at a tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. And you know, he went to Levi's house became Matthew, he gave the name Matthew, and went there, and his disciples come. And what did the people in the area say? Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. 
I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus came to give the way of salvation, the way to deal with sin. Also, you see, not only was it a town of miracles, not only was it a town of calling where Matthew was called, but also it was a town of teaching. Because when Jesus was in that town of Capernaum, he taught his disciples and the people in the area many things. It says in Matthew chapter nine, uh, sorry, Mark chapter nine, they left the place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples and he said to them, the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him. After three days, he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. So he's en route to Capernaum when he taught his, di dis his disciples about the death and resurrection of Jesus. Now we're fully conscious of that. We have the historical account in the Bible. We are aware that Jesus died on Good Friday as we celebrate and rose again three days later. But they were obviously quite ignorant at that time. But we know Jesus taught them about this en route to Capernaum. And when they came to Capernaum, it, it, the disciples on the road had been talking amongst themselves. And what did they, what did they say? He asked them, what are you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued who was the greatest. They were talking amongst themselves. Uh, no, you're, I'm better than you. You know, you can just imagine them talking. Who's the greatest one amongst us? And Jesus, uh, sitting down and says, he called the twelve and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the, the very last and servant of all. You know, and Jesus went on to say, he took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he asked them, whoever comes, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. The secret of knowing God is through Jesus. He taught them what it meant to be a servant. In the Philippians chapter 2, we read there an awful lot about the Lord Jesus. Okay, it says, your attitude should be the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God to be something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. He was prepared to leave the glory of heaven, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and to be informed in the appearance of a man. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. What he was saying here, in this life, I want you to serve one another. If you're a Christian, you're there to serve me and to serve God. And as just as Jesus humbled himself and left the glory of heaven to come to this sinful world and die on a cross, he would expect us that attitude to be in us, the attitude of being a servant. But we know that God one day will glorify him completely. He is seated at God's right hand now. But one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Also, Jesus taught very much that this was the way to God, to a, way, to a relationship with God, that you need to come through Jesus. And also, it was in Capernaum, in the, in the synagogue there, that he taught them and taught about being the bread of life. It says, this is the bread, we read about this in John 6, came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. He taught there, 
he taught there. Also, it talked about everlasting life through Jesus. It's quite interesting, this little thing, this little story, but we need to read into it, because it says, after Jesus and his disciples arrived to Capernaum, the collectors of two the, the two drachma temple tax came to Peter and asked, does your teacher pay tem temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked? From who do the kings of the earth collect their taxes? From their children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. Okay, he's implying there that this was the temple was his father's house, was God's house. And he was God's son. He didn't need to pay the tax. Others did. But he goes on to say, it's interesting this, but so that we may not cause offence, go into the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Jesus didn't want to cause them offence, but he explains here that really he was indicating that he was God's own son, God's son, and eternal life was through him. And then, of course, it was a town, sadly, of unrepentance. Okay? Jesus says this, he sums up about Capernaum. He said, then Jesus came to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been formed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And he says these dreadful words, really, and you, Capernaum, you will... You will Will you be lifted up to the skies? No. You'll go down to the depths. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it would be more tolerable, bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. It's so sad, isn't it? That this town, he did so much there. He did all these miracles. And yet, they wouldn't repent and they wouldn't believe in him. Also, they failed to accept, in John chapter 6, who Jesus one was. You know, at this time, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. They said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I came down from heaven? And also it goes on to say that people followed him in John chapter 6, he said, they followed me, not because of what I am or who I am, because I fed them. Because they saw the physical, they saw the, 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 um, the miracle of the feeding of, of the people. And they followed him because they thought they were going to get food. Okay? It says here, Jesus says, verily I tell you, you're looking for me, not because I, you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. So we've got to be careful. Why are we following Jesus? We need to believe in him and trust in him. We need to realise and acknowledge who Jesus was. And we need to follow Jesus, not because what we get out of it, but what we can do in service to him how he can help us. Okay? In Luke chapter 10 it says this, whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. He says this about us. So if we tell people about Jesus, okay, and they refuse to accept what we say, okay, they reject Jesus because they reject what we say. The message of salvation that we declare is belief in Jesus. But whoever rejects me, then it goes on to say, so if they won't accept what we say, based on the Bible, they reject Jesus. And if they reject Jesus, they reject God. And that's so sad, isn't it? It's such a tragedy when we have a wonderful Saviour 
Well, what's the secret of life? Jesus. Knowing Jesus. That's what is such a wonderful thing. If we commit our lives to him, and we can all testify, I'm sure, of what Jesus has done in our life. We've all often let him down, we've often failed him. But the secret of life is knowing Jesus. So remember that town of Capernaum, please. And we trust we won't be like that. But we will believe and trust and follow Jesus. Did you do the quiz all right at the back? Yeah. Get them all right? Did you find the capital Liechtenstein? <laughs> there we are. If you got them all right, that one will fit at the end. So there we are. Uh, good to see you all this morning. Trust God will bless our thoughts. Best see those on Zoom and those who will listen later. Shall we just pray? Mm -hmm. Then I'll hand back to, to, uh, to, to Liz. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, for your word. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what we learn for it. Mm -hmm. Help us to trust and believe and know Jesus more and more. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Liz. Did anyone see the um, the match last night? It wasn't wasn't available to everybody to see, but um, there was a match last night, a football match between uh, Chelsea and Manchester City over the who was the best club in Europe. <coughs> uh, Chelsea won, uh, and Man City lost, and there was a lot of heads that were down on the Man City side of things because they were losers, and a lot of heads which were up on the, on the um, Chelsea side of things because they were the winners. Now, do you feel like a winner or a loser? Yeah. Well, we're going to sing Lift Up Your Heads um, because even though we might not feel that we're a winner um, um, and, foo, and we lift our heads to the coming King and we bow before Him and we adore Him and we sing to his majesty. So we're going to sing this song now. Lift up your hands to